reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. I have one thing to say to those non-believers. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. Better than most. How about him? That is better than most. Better than most. Three seconds of mid four. Jenkins gives it to Jenkins for the championship. Oh! Jenkins hitting the winner at the buzzer. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Championship Sunday at Smuggler's Notch Resort. We're here for our fourth and final round of the 2022 Green Mountain Championship. And welcome in, everyone. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. Joined alongside four-time world champ and Hall of Famer Valerie Jenkins. And Val, just a couple of weeks ago, the world championships were held in Emporia. We saw two of our top European competitors in Hannah Blumrose, along with Kristen Tatar. They were battling throughout the entire week. Today, Kristen doesn't have that advantage of five strokes going into the final round, but you know we're going to see a great battle. Yeah, absolutely. And from what we've seen on these two courses and how these players play, I mean, they hand strokes back and forth on just about every hole. So we'll see if Kristen can get her shots back online, get herself close to the basket, and see if that putt comes back. I mean, it it was a little shaky, but it came back on hole 18. So let's see if it'll continue on. Henna, it's all about her just getting the putts in the basket as well. And yesterday it was very uncharacteristic, especially as of late from what we've seen from Kristen Tatar, a few errant shots. She was throwing a couple of forehands that were not finding the fairway. And then she had one minor meltdown here on hole number nine. It ended up being a three putt. And that led to a double bogey. And then she comes back on 10. And as this one leaks off to the left hand side, she's not able to get the birdie there. Hole 15. <laughs> A number of her competitors struggled to find the island. She'd walk away with the bogey on 17. She had a look at one of the easiest holes on the course for birdie, but came up just short. And then, as you said, finally on hole 18, she cans one from circle two, something she had done so well in the previous two rounds. And finishes this one off with the 11 meter putt. That is what tied her up with Henna. We're coming into Championship Sunday all knotted up. And Kristen said it was really that, that putt that rattled her. And that was really, she couldn't get over that. And it took several holes for her to get back on track. Well, that was her worst performance in terms of straight scoring as a plus two yesterday. That's the worst one that she had since the first round of the Dynamic This Open. So that just tells you how impressive she's really been playing over these last few months to know that a 965 rated round was her worst round in all of those months. She's won an elite series, she's won a major, and she's won a silver series all in the last month. Today, trying to pick up another elite series event here in the playoffs. Presented by our friends 
at Discraft. This is the fourth and final round of the first ever Disc Golf Pro Tour Playoff event. Congratulations for being here on Sunday. <laughs> We're contesting today out on the Fox Run Meadows course. Variable conditions. <laughs> really? This is our 935 starting card, our chase card. First in the tee today from Seattle, Washington. Let's hear it for Ella Hansen. <laughs> on the tee from Universal City, Texas. How about Valerie Mondahano? Alright. And finishing up this foursome from Valkyakoski, Finland. Let's give it up for Evelina Salonen. Yeah! Chase card is off. See if anyone can make a push to the podium today. Now we're going to take a look at our Canna current conditions. Temperature at 66 degrees. The wind is still very low at just three miles per hour, but it is coming out of yet again a different direction. Weather is going to be more of a factor today than any of the previous three days. They're calling for thunderstorms and rain, but I don't think we're going to see it until the MPO round later this afternoon. So keep those fingers crossed. That we're going to see a rain free round here for our FPO championship. And it looks like we've got Zoe Andyke. She's on the tee with the PDGA's own Hayden Henry. Take it away, guys. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Smuggler's Notch Resort for the fourth and final round of the very first ever Disc Golf Pro Tour playoff event. I'm joined by Hayden Henry from the PDGA. So, Hayden, first of all, let's tell them what we're feeling with the conditions out here today. Let's go with changing. <laughs> um, we've experienced every layer possible this week. I wore two pairs of pants yesterday, and now we're wearing shorts. So we'll see what the weather does. The rain's on the way, but we might have a little window for FPO to get going. So. That's right. I think it's about 60 yeah, degrees, and spot. there's spurts of calm, spurts of wind. So I think throughout the day we'll see the wind pick up. I did notice, though, that the cows were laying down in the field this morning. That means calm before the storm. The old Vermont weather station, I guess. If That's the cows right. are chilling, then uh, the weather's coming. And let's just give the audience a little bit of a briefer of the shakeup on the leaderboard and what the field size is today. Yeah, another exciting finish on the Pro Tour, which we've seen all year. So can't wait to see what, what unfolds today with Henna and Kristen at the top. So exciting. And then the playoffs are kicking off. And you can really feel the energy shifting on the ground here. They're they're vying for either the top seed or, or to qualify and get in. So we'll have a shorter, uh, a smaller field next week at MVP and getting even smaller heading on, in toward the championship. So uh, you can definitely feel the energy. Big pressure, big energy, smaller field. Make sure to watch the Disc Golf Network and stay tuned for what's going on out here on the field. I'm Zoe Andyke, and back into the booth with Terry and Val. Thank you so much, Zoe and Hayden. As we said, temperatures are one of the things that jumps out at me the most. We saw hand warmers. We've seen extra layers earlier in the week. Temps are supposed to get to near 70 degrees, so much more comfortable and maybe what our players are used to. Now we've got Ella Hansen with her second shot. 
hole number one. In the second round of this event, Ella Hansen had one of the best rounds of the field at four under. If she can relive those great memories. I know she has the distance, but on this course, it requires still a lot of accuracy when you get out into the wide open. Like Leah Sinigini on the bag for her friend Ella. Here's Evelina after a crushing opening drive, putting herself well inside the circle for a birdie look on one. It's true, you don't see too many players getting past that first tree line. Easy work of that upshot. And with the wind picking up and being out in the open and allowing the elements to take control, the players are going to be very, they're going to have to be very accurate and precise with those second shots and the approach shots, really take all that pressure off of having to make a putt when the wind starts to pick up. Going out of bounds on the drive, it looks like cat merch, maybe out of bounds here as well. This is calling it out of bounds. No putting will be required, although finding trouble on the fairway is cat merch. Dehano, we saw a long throw in yesterday on Brewster Ridge. One's right on point next to the basket. Easy tap in coming up for her. Ella is kind of in her own world right now, sitting at three over compared to Kat Merch, who is just behind her four strokes back. So Ella. She can continue the momentum that she had here in that second round. She can move her way up and possibly catch Missy Gannon, who is just one over. That's two strokes separating the two. Be a matter of keeping it in bounds, keeping it clean. And of course, there's a mix of wooded holes on this course as well. It's not completely wide open. There are a few technical shots start the round and to finish, but the middle is pretty wide open. The birdie attempt is light by Ella on line but low. That seemed to come down all to timing for Ella. She had basically given up on the extension before the disc even got to the basket. That's what's so scary about an Evelina miss. So powerful that if she doesn't catch any metal, she's on the other side of the basket at about the same distance. You don't want to start off your round missing a few putts like that. A whole lot of mental strength to bounce back. Cat Merch is in for her double bogey. Par by Hansen. And a par by Valerie. One down, 17 to go for our chase card. We've got more action on the other side this commercial break. The Green Mountain Championship is presented by Discraft, the worldwide leader in disc sports.
Try not to overthink your form when you're competing. During the tournament, you have to stay in the moment. It's easy to lose the moment when you're overanalyzing things. But playing disc golf is all about intuition. You have to play with feeling. Next time you're on the tee pad, take a deep breath, take in your surroundings. Visualize your line and trust in all the work that you've put in. Mastering your focus is why this game is so special. It's what keeps us coming back for more. Paul Macbeth, what a shot in bounds. That is a smash. It just seems like he's willing his way to the top. PDGA World Champion. Go long! Whoa. Hey, over here! It was important for me to partner with a retailer that could help with growing my brand and making my products available all over the country and across the world. Flight Factory has helped me accomplish that. Check out all of my gear and thousands of other discs at Flight Factory. Look at our U-Disc course close up over here at the Fox Run Meadows course, which was established in 2013, established in 2015, Thanks to design by Steve Brinster, who is our 2013 U.S. champion. And then for the women, it is a par 63, nearly 8,500 feet. Signature shot is hole 18, the par 4 at just over 700 feet. As you have OB on the right and the left, trying to close out your championship Sunday. UDIS, the app for disc golfers. Make sure you go out and download it today. And while we're talking about the course and what they need to do, we get Val's keys thanks to BlackInkDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Val, final day. They should be taking notes and using these keys of yours, shouldn't they? Oh, they should have it all dialed in by this point. But I think the keys to success start with confident disc selection. And these really have to do with both courses. But when you come out to Fox Run, commit to your shot. It, Go for the distance, lay up if you need to, and then fairway hits. I think that's going to be so important to keep it in bounds and stay safe, but put yourself in a good place for your next shot. And hopefully, Fox Run's your favorite course, because that's all we have left between now and crowning our champion. So we know Evelina and Henna play very well on courses like this. It's very similar to kind of that wide open course like we see out at the Emporia Country Club and a little bit of Jones as well of just keeping it inside the lines. Valerie Mundahano, the elevated basket on hole number two. And we're also hearing now of some rain that is just starting. So 
Although it's coming in earlier than the forecast had predicted, we're going to make sure that everyone, all of the equipment, all of our players are ready to go. We saw a few of our competitors walking out and preparing and bringing umbrellas, but we really did not anticipate it for a couple of more hours. In fact, I had opened thinking that we were going to be completely rain-free for the round in the FPO show this morning, but yet again, I'm wrong, Val. Sounds like a typical Sunday out here. I hope the sun comes back out for these players' sake. I mean, this is the last chance, and you want to give it everything you can. And just having the rain come into play is just that another element of something to have to think about or deal with besides just simply executing a difficult shot. And we see Kristen's significant other, Silver Lett, on the bag, also sporting the umbrella already, so that will be a huge asset to have. On the course, just able to keep things that much drier and a little bit easier for her round today. It is such a huge advantage to have a caddy in the rain. Just having that extra set of hands to hold on to a wet disc or dry something off. Keep the bag dry. And just like that, it appears the rain has uh, settled. A couple of things to note. Make sure your phones are all in silent. If it's on airplane mode, that'll help us with our broadcast. Make sure you make no movement um, or talk to make any distractions for the players. Um, anyone holding a quiet sign, we're going to be making a line. You're going to be behind that line because we want to stay behind the players and the media. Um, besides that, it's going to be a great time. Thanks for being out here. Let's do it. Woo! Yeah! I know at least three of our competitors have caddies. Uncertain if Henna will have a caddy. I know that Jonathan Poole of Innova was your caddy the entire week of Worlds. Interesting to note how dominant Kristen Tatar has been at this event this weekend in terms of improvement over her previous visit. She was here in 2018 and 2019. Those two visits, she averaged 962 golf. This weekend, she's already averaging 1,002 golf. So quite the improvement over her previous two visits. Valerie Mundahano. Going right up the middle. There's out of bounds on the right. There's a Mando sign over there as well. So they have to throw up the gap over the hill near the basket. The reachable hole from the tee. Uh, Evelina with a kick to the left, and that's going to be incredibly punishing. And of course, you've got the low ceiling to knock any discs that are coming in too high. All right, welcome everyone to the fourth and final round in and out kind of all the eighth day. annual Green Mountain Championships here at Smuggler's Notch Resort. We're sponsored today by our friends at Discraft. This is the fourth and final round of the first ever DGPT playoff event. Congratulations for being here in the final. This is our lead card, a 9.55 start. We're contesting today on a moist <laughs> and windy 
Fox Run Meadows course. <laughs> First in the box today, our current co-leader. She's, she's from Rauma, Finland, representing Innova Champion Discs. Let's give it up for Henna Blumroos. Let's go, Henna! in the box from Panu, Estonia. Also our co-leader representing Latitude 64. She's the current world champion of disc golf. Let's give it up for Kristen Tatar. Next on the tee box, from Los Angeles, California, he's representing Innova Champion Discs, looking to chase down our co-leaders. Let's hear it for Owen Scoggin. Completing this foursome from Beacon, New York. She's representing Discraft. She's the current Disc Golf Pro Tour champion. Let's give it up for Missy Gannon. is off over one of our co-leaders henna the first to tee we're going to take another look at it we saw the slip also have to make sure that she's okay oh just right leg slid right out from under of course aiding in that release to then push her to the left side finding the out of bounds And that can be cer certainly the disadvantage of being the first player to tee or the first player to throw. You know, you always talk about the wind dummy, first person to throw, then you can judge what your shot needs to be. And after seeing henna slip, everyone else is much more cautious, getting up on the tee, testing out the grip of that tee pad. It did look painful, though, to see her leg lock up like that. We heard, she is okay. Yeah, and we heard Silver talking to Kristen immediately after that. Go in. Sure. She knew exactly what she needed to do as Val Mondejano throws her approach on hole number three. It actually did hit off the basket, so uh, channeling maybe a little of the Greg Barsby that we saw out here from a few rounds ago when he threw it in on hole three from similar distance. Rain has picked back up. We see umbrellas 
have been extended and raincoats have been put on. So this is something they'll be dealing with off and on for the next few hours as Tatar throws a flexing forehand that challenges the backside out of bounds, but it doesn't come back in. Well, it didn't look like it did to me. Maybe that line is closer than I thought. Yeah, I've been noticing with the sponsor walls, they're marking the out-of-bounds line about a meter in, and I gave the green flag. Not sure if we have Zoe out there and ready to go yet if she's near the green. If you are, Zoe, feel free to uh, just confirm with us. We saw the green flag, but I thought it was much closer to the OB than maybe even we, we realize. Yeah, Terry, um, she is totally in bounds. It was a very close call, but Kristen will be putting for the birdie. Appreciate it, Zoe. Hand by own puts her to circle's edge. And with own's yeah. style of shot, she really needs the height underneath the disc. If anything comes out low, it's likely going to hit the ground and skip because it has so much angle. Low and overturned right out of her hand for Henna. I noticed she didn't take the full meter from the out of bounds. So she just brought it a little bit off the line and she was trying to go for that tighter, more direct route. What a great drive from Missy. You can even hear everyone in the crowd going, oh, she got past the trees or she got up into the trees. It's fun for these players who come out here and play this course on a regular. They know what they can do. And then to see the world's best females come out here and attack it, show them how it's played. Definitely has slipped out of bounds for Missy Gannon. She'll have a comeback look to save the par. Difficult throwing that Anheuser shot. You don't have the right amount of touch the disc is going to continue to fly out and naturally flight back to the left. And it seems like Missy should be inside the circle going past the basket long. On point approach shot there by Hannah. No putting will be required. And of course, we have a very trimmed field. However, in the early goings of this final round, we're seeing hole one already averaging 5.06. So, full stroke over par for our competitors here today. And we've yet to see a birdie.
rain pick up with more intensity. Missy for par. Solid opening putt for Missy Gannon. Because she can still walk away with the four. I always find it fascinating to see how these players with a longer setup prepare themselves quicker in the rain. How do they protect the disc? What do they change up? Just off the chains for Owen Scoggins. It looked good out of her hand. Owen will have to settle for a par here, not making up any ground on Kristen. a great professional note well professional or amateur note anytime you're near an out of bounds line you should always get at least one other competitor from your group to come over and verify that you're in bounds otherwise the default would be assumed that you're out of bounds so make sure you bring a competitor over and give them the opportunity to look Kristen's birdie attempt is short With a chance to make up two strokes on Henna with a made putt right there, it is not often, specifically in the last couple of weeks, that we see Kristen Tatar miss a putt like that. After the OB stroke, Henna will card the bogey five. And we will have a new outright leader in Kristen. One stroke advantage. Thank you guys for joining us here this morning. We invite you to subscribe to the Disc Golf Network so you can get all the exclusive previous round coverage. We've been here for four days bringing you mornings and afternoons of FPO and MPO coverage. We've got plenty in the queue for the next month or so, Val, including a major also including our Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships and the playoffs that continue over at Maple Hill at the MVP Open next week. DiscGolfNetwork.com. Of course, if you're a PDGA member, you receive a discount for signing up with your subscription. Here's Ella Hansen, with her second on hole number four. That's going to give her a look for birdie. Number two is one of the shortest holes on the course at about 250 feet. We'll be behind the basket at about 20 feet. Also out of bounds on the right. Both Kristen and Owen off their mark with the forehand attempts. Here's Missy Gannon lining up a backhand. She pinned this underneath the basket in our first attempt back in round two. Off the line today. Precaution here by Henna. Beautiful, really. 
least point. Basket hunting and it hits the stand. Making a very quick correction and the only one to navigate and park the hole. What a shot. What a recovery also by Hannah. I was worried she was about to overcompensate because she was so worried about the tee pad. You find players removing the legs out of it and just using all upper body. She had such great height on this, allowing the disc to fly so perfectly straight. What a way to bounce back after hole one. Would have been even cooler with an ace. Just erase those strokes immediately. Yeah. <laughs> An ace would have been great, but I think Hannah was thinking, all right, hopefully that basket can slow this down. Because if she were to miss the pin, she would have, might have found the out of bounds behind. execution for Gannon's recovery shot. If you have hole four, what the approach shot looks like. Wow, not a great upshot from Kristen. Leaking its way to the right, but it is safe. She's going to have an uphill putt to the elevated basket. Workable for own, but a little bit of work to do. Head on four, Ella Hansen for birdie. Just as we saw Kristen take the one stroke advantage over Henna on hole one. We're going to see the score shift here in just a moment. The question will be is, will it be a tie for the lead or will Henna have the outright lead? Kristen Tatar is going to need to make this to save the par and be all squared up with Henna. Kristen low. After the round yesterday, with, when we talked with Kristen and how her round went and with her struggles, she said, you know, it was just something I wasn't used to. I've been playing so well. I've been so confident that it is just tough for her to get back to these situations, to have to bounce back. No problems for Scoggins. She's going to walk away with a par. in or bogey. Quick recap of what have we've seen in the first two holes. Henna with the slip on one, inevitably leading to that drifting left and out of bounds. She'd go on to take the bogey, give up her lead, her share of the lead, and Kristen Tatar not able to get up and down and make the recovery. Kristen comes back with the bogey of her own. Henna answers. 
grilling the pedestal and has the easy tap in. So just like that, Anna will be your leader at six under. And we take a look at our statistics, thanks to our friends at Paragon Disc Golf. Anytime you're blue or a shade of blue, you're either leading or in second in that category. And you see so many of those statistics where Henna's leading in a lot of the driving categories, Kristen leading in many of the putting-related categories. Excited to see how the battle's going to unfold here today. Footing looked good there as she hits the right side fairway. Trees that indicate where the Mando is, and not a terrible kick. It wasn't, yeah, to actually get the forward kick as opposed to just kicking directly to the left. I believe she made it to the top of the hill. Great line from Owen. Another foot or two higher than she could have carried to the pin. Once you get over that hill, it slowly drops off to the basket and then continues going downhill to an out-of-bounds line. So controlling the speed as these drives come into the pin is very important. But of course, you want to have enough power to get to the basket. Gotta love a second kick, especially one that kicks you back out into the fairway. Your shot by Kristen. It's the check up near the basket, and she's gonna be looking to pick up a birdie here on three. As we take another look at it, I thank our friends at Sunstein who can help you out with any of your intellectual property needs, logos, branding, copyrights, patents, whatever it might be, Sunstein can help you out. Take a patented low dr line drive from Kristen Tatar, something that you see her throw just about everywhere, whether the course is wooded or wide open, she has a low line drive that she's always attacking with off the tee. Reach out to our friends over at Sunstein. Hand by Gannon next with a tree and then an unfavorable roll to the left side. Now Ella Hansen on the tee of five. And I do believe she is in the water. Has so much power to get to the pin that it is tempting to go for the green a little high. Morning yoga session here from Henna. Outstretched. And to generate power is going to be so difficult from this position. And to keep it accurate. See what doesn't, she can do. Doesn't have a lot of height to work with either. That is as good as she could have possibly <laughs> executed that. What a shot by Hannah. So this is very similar to what we've seen in the previous rounds. Just back and forth. 
Anna and Kristen just changing the advantage that they have on one hole to the next. deep of the basket but the putt will be uphill away from the slope that is directly behind her on from deep in circle two a huge drop off directly behind and Val I think we've finally learned what it takes for own to lay up a shot Normally, Owen just laughs at death putt. But yeah, I think that was a little bit too long for Owen. An incredible season that Owen Scoggins has had this year. She is on pace to break any previous personal best records in terms of money earned. She's also dipped into the Pro Masters FP40 division, and all three times she showed up to that division, she's walked away a champion, including the Tim Selinski Major just a couple of weeks ago, and also a reigning world champion in the FP40 division. So impressive. And Missy connects with the tree between her and the basket her off the mark and this is going to be a double bogey for Missy Gannon. We have only seen one birdie on this hole out of Jennifer Allen but the majority of the field is getting par. Hole three. Par will join the birdie club. But it is a hole, if you're out of position, you likely see players being able to save that par, as Hannah did. It's unfortunate to see Missy all behind on this hole. And for the third hole in a row, we see a scoring change between our two leaders. We're going to check in with Ella Hansen. We saw the OB shot. This is to save the par. And a little bit of a roll for Hansen. We're on a roll. It's Championship Sunday. We'll be right back. We are dedicated to the game. Developing technology and providing data that helps you take the next step. Whether it's your next training session, league night, or major. Because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport. And the best way to do that is together. We're focused on the future to make that happen. If disc golf is your game, make Gotta Go, Gotta Throw your disc golf warehouse. With a huge selection of discs, bags, baskets, carts, shirts, and more, GottaGoGottaThrow.com has all the tools to take your game to the next level. Shop online or our Golden Valley, Minnesota store. Free shipping with all online orders over $75. Online or in-store, get what you need for the game you love. GottaGoGottaThrow.com, your disc golf warehouse. In the game since 1993. 
Power Grip is the only disc golf retailer operating in both Europe and the United States. We got our start in Finland in 2009, and now we've established Power Grip USA's online store, with retail stores still to come. Come see why we call ourselves a pretty good disc golf shop. Shop online at PowerGripUSA.com. We're here to help. Hi, I'm Innova Team Captain Nate Sexton. Welcome to our instructional disc golf series. Welcome back. This is for Bogey from Ella Hansen on five. Just part of the frustration that you find on hole number five. Not only is it a very daunting and challenging tee shot, but once you get to the green, it doesn't get any easier. And this is just so steep of a putt and if it does not catch in those chains and stay in the basket there is a very high likelihood it could roll back to Ella's feet thankfully that one just flops next to the pin That will be a triple bogey for Ella Hansen. Struggles here on hole number five. Otherwise, she had the birdie on two and a handful of pars. So, let's see if she can bounce back and recover. We're also seeing Katie Tati. She opened with a bogey and then has put together five birdies since then. She's now over on hole 13. Now, Kristen. Really great shot for Kristen, throwing it up over the bushes and landing into this island area. The first attempt out here, she landed it over there, but landed behind the single bush in the middle of that island and was forced to lay up. These are blind shots. They're just trying to throw up and over the bush. That's the first attempt and then just hoping it lands in a good position, really. It seems obvious to throw up this left-hand side, but it is just so narrow. It's tough for players to get as much distance as they want off of the tee shots. Well-placed shot there by Owen Scoggins. Missy can bounce back after the double bogey on three. That's pushing to the right side and truly in the worst possible spot on this hole is directly behind that bush. And the rain is coming down right now out here in the open. So hole four, see the left-hand route, very low ceiling, very narrow fairway. These are the shots coming up and over the bushes to land into this area. Anything too right, you saw the bush come into play for Missy. The second shots, you're throwing over the out of bounds again to land back to the green. And you can see from the course map on the right hand side of our screen, it is circled with out of bounds. So the players need to be aware of what the wind is doing up by the basket so that they can land right near the pin slightly elevated and just with those rocks outlining the pin make it a little more challenging on the putt well and this pin so iconic because it usually provides one of the most beautiful views out here at smugglers notch resort and we invite you to come out here any time of the year we'll be here next year for the world championships again in september 
but they are a four season resort offering plenty of activities throughout the entire year also voted as one of the best family resorts year after year you can find more information at smugs.com likely be a pitch no more than 50 or 75 feet forward if even that actually for missy gannon just to set herself up to throw over and I want to throw it over to Zoe Andyke. Zoe, normally we get a beautiful view of the mountains behind hole number four. Today, what's the weather doing out there? Can it make up its mind? No, Terry. Right now we've got a pretty fussy weather pattern happening. The wind or the rain is coming down pretty steadily right now, and we're having gusts of wind. You know, between six and ten, six and twelve miles an hour. Uh, we can still see the outline of the beautiful mountains, but. It's pretty dark and pretty gray, mostly cloud cover out here. So I think it's going to be adverse conditions throughout the entire round. Appreciate that, Zoe. We've had cooler temperatures over the previous three days, but today the precipitation is joining us. High out of Missy's hand and short. So Gannon will be out of bounds. Let's see both Kristen and Henna. Both with just about 300 foot approach shots, thanks to our friends at Bushnell. The OB line behind the pin is inside the circle. So about 20 feet past the basket is out of bounds. Safest side is the left hand side of the green or short. Left hand side as you called for Val. that rock outline near the basket there's just something about the visual of it that makes it tough for the players to get close enough to the pin kind of forces the players to throw around that rock wall and that will leave them with a 10 or 15 foot putt and land on the green you're looking good and wow Kristen just barely getting over the out of bounds. Okay, yep. Spotter marked Missy's as it crossed over on the green. They try to figure that out. A look at Ella on hole six. Out of bounds again Thank off the tee shot. Thank you. And it's especially painful yeah, knowing that hole six is one of the easiest holes on the course. Okay. <laughs> well, Hansen out of bounds looking at a bogey. <laughs> so Missy going from figuring out where she's going to mark her lie for her upshot to Hey, you went out up here. Now try for a putt. And in Missy's head thinking, all right, well, that saved me at least a, a stroke, maybe. Big shout out and thanks to all of our volunteers and supporters out there on the course. Naturally, it takes a massive effort of competitors, spectators, volunteers, helpers, paid staff, all just to pull off a disc golf pro tour event. So having extra people on the course all well, absolutely crucial and essential to how our tournaments are run here's missy gannon
Big money Missy finds the bottom of the basket for that one to save the bogey. And what a benefit of having that spotter. See where it went out of bounds. She takes advantage and cashes the putt. Kristen just outside the circle. And for the third time in four holes, Kristen Tatar's putt is low. At Worlds. It was so difficult for Henna to find the opportunity to kind of break through and be the leader because Kristen was playing so perfectly, making every shot. This is Henna's chance for redemption. doesn't step up to the opportunity. She also comes up short, and they will remain tied when they head over to hole five's tee. And with the cons consistency that we've seen out of Kristen, as you're saying, Val, you just don't get a lot of those opportunities. Now Owen Scoggins looking to pick up her first birdie of the round. And she converts, so own Scoggins, one down for the round, pulls within four of our leaders with that made putt. And we gotta keep an eye on Own. She is creeping in, and as well as she's played all season long, she is right there in the hunt. I think the additional length of Fox Run Meadows wouldn't play to her strong suit, but she played very well out here two days ago. Today, she'd like to make a charge. She's got Henna and Kristen to catch. Here's Gannon to save Bogey from long range in circle two. We'll be right back on the TF5. Please don't let me into my zone. Uh, let me into my zone. Please don't let me into my zone. Uh, let me into my zone. Let me let me into my zone. Uh, let me into my zone. Please don't let me into my zone. I just need some time on my own. All these people trying to get a conversation. You can conversate to that phone. Uh, I'm God up on that throne, yeah. So I'm never alone, yeah. Balling can't beat me up because I'm back in my zone now. Nah. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Welcome back. We're on the T of hole number five. And Owen Scoggins with the honors after the lone birdie that we saw a moment ago. <laughs> and Owen, who always puts it on plenty of angle is too much for that one, and that's going to be out of bounds off the tee, and she's going to have to come way back closer to the tee in order to throw that shot, as she had never come back in bounds at all.
Gallery approves of Kristen Sitar's effort. Yeah, and if you do hit those trees with enough power, you're likely to punch through. You know, Henna went for the pin in the first round out here. Gets this one nice and low. Much safer play and punches through. She'll have an uphill putt from circle two to the sloped green on five. This hole is scary for players with the distance like Missy Gannon has. Just not enough to get past those trees, but you want to make sure you're getting down the fairway to make that second shot easier. She's going to have to deal with whatever those, whatever placement those trees leave her. Back on six, Ella had gone out of bounds and then did take the bogey stroke, hole number four, or uh, a bogey, number four. <laughs> Lost for words there. I'm taking a bogey of my own. Ella bogeyed six, and now she's gone out of bounds on seven. And I think it's depicting how I'm talking right now. So <laughs> we'll see if we can get on track. Onskagen's looking for her spot. Yes, good. Zoe, kind of an awkward spot for where Owen Scoggins is. What do you expect from her here? Well, yeah, she's well out of position at a very awkward distance to the pin. I'm thinking she's just going for placement around the trees. <laughs> All right. Or in the circle. She's gotten past the, <laughs> yeah, she's gotten past the trees, came up just in front of the basket, but then did get a skip to the bottom. So she'll be putting uphill, trying to save the bogey. Yeah. I guarantee Owen did not practice throwing her next shot after her tee shot from there. But what an opening for Owen to throw over the bridge, over the water, and bring it back in bounds. Trying to go far again. Set up great for the sidearm. Looks like the umbrellas have been lowered yet again. This will be a constant back and forth throughout the day. <coughs> Scale of one to 10, Zoe, how difficult is this approach shot gonna be for Missy Gannon? That does not look favorable. Uh, definitely not, Terry. I'm going to give that a 9.5 in the difficulty. She's pretty much got to fully get on the ground and use all of her length to stretch out and just try to pitch it out. Whereas Kristen is on the front side of those trees and has an open look to the basket. Thank you, Zoe. And yeah, so difficult because she does have to worry not only about the slope in which the basket sits near, but then the OB pond on the left side, on the high left side. So this is going to require quite a bit of accuracy. good for Missy Gannon. It's going to give her a chance for the uphill putt to save the par. I think she got that putter all warmed up on the previous hole. Going to need it. As Zoe called it, in front of the bigger bush, we'll find Kristen Tatar. She still has to navigate with the low ceiling. Easy little flick for Kristen, a shot she's very comfortable with. 
And that will be a stress-free tap-in par for Kristen. So I'm interested to see what kind of attempt Henna will give this putt. Door is open again for her. Oh, but this is way far outside circle. Really in that layup zone. And she puts it to the high side. A little bit flatter up there, not worrying as much about the slope. Or possibly having it hit the slope and then roll down the hill. In these type of situations, I want to see Henna nestle that disc right underneath the basket. She still has a little bit of a tester putt. There's a slope behind the basket. I guess this will help build confidence if she's able to hit it. First, we see Gannon down the hill. Get into save par. <laughs> she has been putting great this weekend. And that's that typical Missy Gannon from distance, able to save the strokes. It's fun to see when players are playing really well, but then also relying on the putt to have those extra fireworks. Right now, Missy Gannon has Ella Hansen closest to her, just two behind as they're looking at fourth and fifth place positions. Own Scoggins off the front of the basket and Own will take a double bogey. That will likely uh, increase her deficit by two both Kristen and Henna. Yeah. Henna escapes with a par. Follows up her birdie on four with the double on five. She goes to one over on today's round. And here's Ella Hansen. This is her fifth shot on the par five. And putting it right next to the basket. Hopefully just limiting that to a bogey. And up ahead then on the green, Valerie Bundahano. This is a birdie look from just outside the circle and she connects. Valerie picking up her first birdie of the round. She's back to even par on the day, sitting at eight over. And Jennifer Allen on the eighth. See her pulling on her arm, and she's... <laughs> certainly been a topic of conversation. We saw some injury from her all the way back on day number one. I believe that we had Zoe Andike checking in on her. And Zoe, can you give us any updates on Jennifer Allen and her injury? Yeah, Terry, uh, in checking in with her this morning at the practice basket, she said that uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, her pain is at about a 6. She's still only warming up by throwing putters just to get the blood moving and Trying not to throw full power shots at, at any cost. She really wants to finish this event. Thank you for the update. As we wish the best for Jennifer Allen, who's excited to be on this part of the country and playing events she's never played before, even though she has a 20-plus year career in disc golf. And thankfully for Jennifer Allen, she doesn't have to throw that hard to still continue to throw that far. Now when you are a uh, world record holder at I believe 583 feet, 
then uh, you know you've got plenty of power and she can let off on a few of these shots. And someone else who throws far, Henna. Shortest hole in the tournament right here. And Henna has gone way deep and out of bounds here on hole number six. The out of bounds is so close to the basket. It's within 15 feet behind the pin and to the right. Missy just not getting enough turn. Going out of bounds on the left-hand side. And really surprising to see some of these mistakes. Hole number six, not only one of the shortest holes, but also just one of the easiest holes for our competitors. We'll watch Owen Scoggins, whose forehand sets up perfectly for the shot. And there goes Zoe, running across, giving a little extra help. <laughs> and it looks like Zoe marking possibly the out of bounds as she's hustling around out there. Doing double duty for our players. And speaking of doing work out there, I mentioned a little earlier, fellow Estonian in Katie Tati who opened with the bogey and then has been just lining them up, peppering them throughout the course, having a great championship Sunday. She's currently up 11 spots into a tie for sixth as she sits at five under for today's round. Shooting one of the hottest rounds that we've seen this weekend on the course. She is just one stroke off of what Kristen did in round two. Getting the hot score today by two strokes. And what a round to do it. Making moves and climbing up that leaderboard. She is in position to get herself one of her best finishes of the season. Missy Gannon having to rely on the putter again. This is to save par from circle two. Oh. Effort is short to the slightly elevated basket, so Gannon will pick up a bogey. Do you think it might be me then? See the stick? Yeah, it's right there, Hannah. Yeah, you're just in behind. Yeah. So? You would go the ball from here? Yeah. Oh, that's it. So, oh, that's right. I think it's maybe more <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Kristen for birdie. On point. Guitar moves to one under for today, but seven under overall. She will be your outright leader. And I will need to convert to just stay one back of Kristen. That was a great putt from Henna. Yeah, and <laughs> something that we saw the other day that feels like it's a, a carbon copy today. They've played six holes. They have scored differently on four of the six holes. So it's this constant back and forth battle between the two of them. Right now, Kristen, the one stroke advantage. And as they move over to the T of seven, we've got more action on the other side of this commercial break. I never thought it would happen, and here we are.
thank you DGA for allowing 5,000 kids in our community to be able to learn disc golf that may otherwise not have had access to it. If your course needs new baskets, fill out the survey, come up with a plan, and you could be sitting here a year from now with new baskets at your course. I'm Johannes. Hey, I'm John. And today we're going to talk about how to aim. You have some problems with the distance, the timing, and uh, pretty much everything. This is kind of the, the ground or the beginning of the throw. There you go. Then we're going to throw some forehands. Oh, yeah. Then you just stroke the board, and then you push it in the basket. You should never, ever throw your max on a golf course. Welcome back. We have Valerie Mundahano throwing her second shot on hole number eight. In the fairway the entire way. Inside circle one. As you see the leg ripping from left to right. Here's Evelina Salonen. And it Appears to check up safely for Evelina. The oh. fairways of hole seven and eight do run parallel to each other. So Essentially, whatever winds we're seeing here on seven, they will be coming from the opposite direction on eight. And seven, of course, being our diameter apparel, BII hole. Sponsored hole number seven throughout our entire 2022 Disc Golf Pro Tour and Disc Golf Network campaign. Safe shot off the tee for Kristen Tatar. And Owen Scoggins inbounds. These tee shots are on their own island, and then they have to cross over the out of bounds creek where we can see the bushes and the trees. They have to get through that and then land back onto the fairway. Another slip from Henna. In a nearly identical fashion to what we saw on hole number one, Henna hopefully is all right. But she went down hard as that one lifted and carried off to the left. There's nothing like two slips in a round to just slash your confidence to get power off of these tee shots. Everybody loves the tee shot there by Missy Gannon, as they should. Take another look. And we know Henna gets so much power from the plant. And that's where she's putting all the force down on these tee pads. And it's just these wet conditions. This time not nearly as punishing as hole one as she stayed inbounds on the short left side. Val, you were just talking about crossing the creek and then finding the, the bigger landing zone on the right side. She stayed short of the out of bounds. So she still has... A great opportunity to make a recovery shot, and she's doing exactly that. There's nothing wrong with that second shot. The 
only disadvantage is now she's about 100 feet short of her competitors on every shot to finish out. Here's Ella Hansen for par from Circle's Edge. And a rough patch here for Ella Hansen. She is still sitting in sixth place. She's only dropped one position with her efforts out here today. And this is an overview of our beautiful property out here at Smuggler's Notch. And this is Valerie Mundahano. Back-to-back -back birdies on seven and eight. And as I just mentioned, Ella had dropped one position and Valerie overtook her in the last couple of holes. There's been a four stroke difference between the two of them just in the last two holes. And Oates Goggins, perfect approach shot. Missy Gannon matches. Yeah. And Zoe, we saw a great second shot by Henna. Is she in a position after that shot to still attack the pin, or is she well back of all the other competitors? Now, Terry, that second shot by Henna was absolutely remarkable, and she has all of the distance to attack the pin. What this is going to come down to is her confidence level, because she is in position and has plenty of distance to do it. What an incredible overview shot we're seeing from the drone as Kristen Tatar plays to the bubble on the left side of the fairway, and that is perfect position to attack on her third shot which could set her up for the birdie. Now, Cap Merch, T of nine. There's some cheering a few moments ago, and Cap Merch looking off the tree right to the pin. <laughs> Something good is always happening out here at Smuggler's Notch. A shot there by Cap Merch. And now you're looking at hole number seven as our players are moving down the fairway. That right side line, tree line, used to be the out-of-bounds area, but they've actually tightened it and brought the out-of-bounds in from off of the trees, just narrowing it that much more. You see all of the bright green grass. That is all of your inbounds area. And off to the left of the darker, or should I say the burned-looking grass or dead grass, that's where you see the fairway of eight, which plays back the opposite direction. Out of bounds is short, left, and long of the pin. And is going to need to dial this up to land her disc within circle one to guarantee to be safe. She has 390 to the pin. Keeping this very safe. Plenty wide, and she'll still have a look for birdie. It'll be from deep in circle two, but still an opportunity. Anna, as I mentioned, at 390. Kristen at close to 250 feet. And own with about 300. Here's Ella Hansen. Trying to right the ship a little. 
Unfortunately, she finds that right side tree line and it keeps her in, in the trees that is, but that's out of bounds. So Ella Hansen's struggles continue on the tee of nine. This basket is just on its own. There's nothing to tell how far it really is. Depth perception is crucial. We see that coming in near the stake. Zoe, are you down there? Can you confirm? Because it looks very close to the out of bounds line. I am afraid to say that is out of bounds and it did not cross inbounds on this side. And that is so crucial to hear because that means she will have to throw from the short side of the OB. So she'll gain some distance where she can move up, but she still has to carry over the out of bounds on her next shot. Here's Owen Scoggins. Laying it out wide to the right, and this is drifting back to the basket beautifully, and it checks up. Owen Scoggins is going to be putting for birdie on the longest hole on the course. Kristen wouldn't have placed her disc in the more perfectly safe spot. I mean, she is dead center of that bump out. It's still going to require a full commitment on this upshot. The wind isn't much of a factor. She keeps this next shot safe as well. We saw it a little bit yesterday. We talk about how focused Kristen has looked in these past couple of weeks, and she has just looked so locked in. But having a little bit of struggles, we're starting to see some emotion, a little bit of frustration because she isn't as precise as she has been. Kristen Tatar is human, is what we're finding out. <laughs> Tap in for a cat merch. short side of OB. She had approximately 220 to the pin. We see her go long by 20, maybe 25. And just to really reiterate what you were saying there, Val, when asked about what's been the toughest part right now for Kristen Tatar after a long season and even after her successes, she was saying that really right now, it keeping the focus is her most difficult challenge out on the course. She said, well, my mind starts to wander. She starts thinking about going back home. She starts thinking about friends and family and the grind that she's been on. So keeping her focus, even with the, su the successes that she's having, has been one of the biggest challenges. And so far, she seems to be passing all of the tests. She's had an incredible month over these last few weeks of taking down these big events. She's putting herself in position to do so again today, but maintaining that focus, especially after a four-round tournament. She's battling this woman, Henna. Long look at Birdie from deep in circle two. And it's understandable to hear that these players are getting a little tired, getting exhausted, because it, every round that they're required to be at the top of their game, and it, it becomes a little bit repetitive. You know, where do you find the drive and the fire to keep it going every single round? Oh, and 
chain hit, but doesn't get it to drop. And so Kristen can't take advantage. Looking to distance herself by another stroke. Looks like they will have the same score here on seven. Now, Missy Gannon. And it converts. However, that is another bogey tacked on to Missy's scorecard. That means she's at six over. And creeping on her fourth place position right now is Valerie Mondahano, who is sitting at one under for today's round and just one behind Missy. That's remarkable of seeing Valerie score one under six strokes better than what Missy Gannon is shooting today. Really making moves. And speaking of Valerie Mundahano, this is the tee shot on 10. Very attackable par three. And this shape looks great as it's tracking to the pin and underneath it, Valerie Mundahano will have a tap in birdie. She will move Two under on today's round. Evelina Salonen has picked up five bogeys on today's round and has one birdie. She's hoping to double it there. Our players in the top 10 are shooting anywhere from a seven over to a three down. <laughs> it's all over the place. And right now we see Deanne Carey's had a very colorful day out here today. She had picked up three birdies in the middle section of the course, but then ran into the roadblock on hole number 16, taking the triple bogey. Owen Scoggins with the honors on the tee of eight. Good shot from Own. The fairway of eight climbs uphill the entire way. These tee shots, they want to throw a full distance shot. They have to throw it slightly nose up to get that full distance. And uh, leaving it early out of her hand. She goes out of bounds. She has all the power to get in a really great spot here, but with more power, it is difficult to control the shot and make sure it's landing in bounds. with the OB line, but staying in is Missy Gannon off the tee of eight. Who doesn't want to throw like Kristen Tatar. We're going to break down this form thanks to our friends at Idio Sports. Take it away, Val. I'm watching every bit of how Kristen throws, and you can see her checking the fairway several times, looking forward, knowing where she wants to release, and it is just such a clean through. There's not a lot of hitches or glitches in the way that she sets up that reach back and then pulls through on the angle she intends to throw. And it is almost exact same form on every shot. 
just a matter of which disc she chooses to release on that angle. Almost as if it's robotic and so repeatable, which has led to the consistency that she's giving us in the disc golf world over these last few years. And Idiosports.com is the place you need to go to go check out a pair of new disc golf shoes made exclusively for the disc golfer. We're seeing now Owen Scoggins throw her second on eight. She left that one very low, but she is safely in bounds, and it'll just be a pitch up underneath the basket. This hole's playing as a par four, around 560 feet. And it is so tempting to want to run for the pin. But as we get closer to the basket, the out of bounds really narrows in and circles the pin like we just saw on hole seven, but much more narrow. Right. Yeah. OB line is inside circle one. Missy marked at 290 feet to the pin. Now flirting with the right side out, OB. It checks up. She's in bounds, and she'll have a look from circle two for the birdie. safe and consistent shot there for Kristen. Putting enough oomph on it to get her at circle's edge to give her a chance to go at that putt. So Henna, although out of bounds, has a shorter distance to the pin than anyone else. Coming in under 270 feet. have to imagine that the few slips she's had really getting into her mind on her tee shot. Let's see if she can save this one. Inside the circle. It is so fun to see Henna throw those type of shots at that distance. And what I notice in her release, I mean, she is just so committed to the line that she throws. And it all, it's the throw, but then it's also the follow through. So she commits to the angle and then continues that on as she follows through with her shot. And that allows her to hit the point in the sky that she's aiming at. Own from 145 has gone deep. She stays in bounds. She'll have that left for her par. No, no, I just want to lay up. This is too much juice. Oh boy. Own with too much juice, as she says. Missy Gannon's putter to the test yet again. Online, just short for Gannon.
Missy still in search of her first birdie on today's round. It's amazing to think that with all the amazing putts that she's hit. Those are to save par or bogey. Thirty-five feet for Tatar's birdie. I hate to say it again, but short for Kristen. At this point, you have to wonder. I know we were just talking about a mental fatigue and mental focus. Any possibility that she's just physically a little fatigued right now, Val? I would assume so. She actually said it after round one out here. She's been going full blast since the World Championship started. I mean, way back in Des Moines as well. A lot of golf. Henna can capitalize on that great up shot. Oh, and that dips out and then gets a roll, but it does stay in bounds. And that's a heartbreaker for Henna. Just when it looked like she was going to match Kristen on this hole and not lose any ground. Looks like she will, in fact, double her deficit. The tar will remain at seven. Hannah, with a bogey, will fall back to five. On Scoggins to save the par. And Val, through eight holes, if I would have told you Kristen Tatar and Hannah would have the same amount of birdies combined as what we are seeing from Owen, you wouldn't have believed me. I mean, I wouldn't have bet it against you, but it is shocking to see at this point Anna still has a tester for her bogey. One of the biggest challenges for Hannah is that short, to medium range putting distance and it comes back to get her here and that's going to be a double bogey so just when I thought it would be a two stroke deficit for Henna it is now turned into a three stroke hey, deficit and we're almost halfway through the round <laughs> we're going to take a look here at hole eight which this one alone has provided plenty of drama Henna with a clean release in terms of her footing however it's still Pushes off to the left. Kristen has an opportunity to make a long birdie putt. She comes up short and Hannah, what looked like was in, then gets up and scoops out, rolls. And then the comeback putt from short range doesn't connect. And a two stroke difference on hole eight, which makes the deficit three overall. Kristen Tatar right now, seven under out in front. It makes me think that that basket may be just two inches too high <laughs> to see three putts just an inch or two short. And look who we have in the gallery today. Not a great weekend for Paige Pierce, who is typically one of our top finishers at this event. She squeaked her way into making the cut yesterday with a birdie putt on the final hole. So she's done, finished her round today, and still wasn't able to recover. No, struggled in shooting a five over out here today. She's going to tie a fellow five-time world champion, Juliana Corver, as they both finished at 21 over for the tournament. And this is well out of bounds for Owen Scoggins. So Owen will likely be erasing the birdie she just picked up on the previous hole. And this looks perfect for Kristen. Checks up center fairway. She'll be able to give that a run for the birdie look. 
And most importantly, staying clear of the OB on the right side. That is the worst place to be. See if Missy Gannon now can find the center of the fairway. This looks great for Missy. And it's exactly that. Missy Gannon. <laughs> Loving it as her friend Paige has showed up. And then nestled this in right underneath the basket in round two. And the crowd is telling us everything we need to know. But that was very close to the out of bounds on the right. She was about 10 feet to the right of where she needed to be for that direct line shot that she likes to throw off of the tee. And we're teeing off of a slightly elevated tee pad, shooting down to the basket. And it really narrows into the pin. I love the shots that Missy and Kristen threw by throwing it directly at the woods on line on the right hand side and then trusting that their disc is gonna hyzer just in front of it. It bumps out on the left-hand side of the green with a little bit more space to land these drives, but it is a very accurate shot that you have to throw if you want to get the birdie on hole nine. Well, speaking of keeping it interesting, Zoe, do you have a, a little intel as to how close we are to some of those OB lines? Well, as you saw, of course, Ona is clearly out of bounds and taking her mark, but Henna, her disc is just under a half of a disc length inside of the boundaries, and that will give her a putt for the birdie. All right, so living on the edge for Henna. Here's Owen Scoggins trying to get up and down. This would be to save bogey. And so much worse. Owen Scoggins out of bounds again on her second shot. Her second throw, which would have been her third. So any momentum that Owen Scoggins had put together over the previous eight holes is going to come to a screeching halt here on nine. Own in a very, almost in an island of her own though, as she's sitting two back of Hannah, but eight ahead of our next competitor in Missy Gannon and Valerie Mandahano. And we see just how close Hannah really was. And she's just gonna pitch it up, not bring any additional putting into play. And she'll be content to walk away with the par. And when we started this round, we were wondering, you know, and it's the only one without a caddy. Well, until a five-time world champ shows up and takes the bag. And the low effort. Maybe a little tentative on that putt intentionally for Tatar. We'll likely see her and Hannah match on hole nine. That would maintain a three-stroke advantage for Kristen. Now... Missy Gannon trying to put her first birdie on the scorecard. Yeah. And she's done it. Gannon in for birdie. underpowered for own on her shot which then puts her out of bounds again and she'll be putting double bogey in corner or yeah. 
we see that she's right at the 10 meter circle there. She opts to only bring it in a few inches as opposed to a full meter that she'd be allowed. A little bit shocking to see Owen take such a huge number on this hole. And that number even bigger than expected. That was for triple bogey. So Owen Scoggins will tap in for a quadruple bogey. And that will bring her that much closer to both Missy Gannon and Valerie Mondahano. Wow, just when you're saying she is on an island of her own. Makes the conversation a little bit more interesting. The yeah, five stroke swing between her and Missy on just one hole. It's a difficult hole, but no one would have ever predicted a five stroke swing uh, between those two there. Here's the second shot by Evelina Salonen on 11. Fighting the wood chips and then eventually checking up. She'll have a birdie luck. Valerie, a long bid. Ooh, that is a risky putt to go for, and knowing the out-of-bounds is so close behind the basket. She ultimately does stay in. This is such an amazing spectator zone. The spectators are up on top of that ridge where the pond is that comes into play on a few of the holes and they could just ride that pond line and view the next couple of holes. What a great vantage point. It is and thanks to our official cancer prevention partner, Eric. Really recognition is critical. Make sure you go out and Check in with your doctor, attend all your regularly scheduled doctor visits, and also if something seems abnormal, make sure to get it checked out as Missy Gannon, solid tee shot here on 10. He ends up basket high on this 316 foot par three. This appears to be wide. We'll see if it gets a skip up the hillside. And it does. DTP, just a few feet closer to the basket than Missy. And Hannah's pulled that right. And we see it drop down, and from our drone view, it appears Hannah is out of bounds by less than two feet. And Scoggins looking to recover for the quadruple bogey. She'll be at circle's edge, looking to pick up another birdie. We'll be right back, yeah, green of 10. <laughs> Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. I mean, it's literally the most popular disc of all time in the history of the sport. At its core, it's one of the most important tools a player has in their bag, a dependable, straight-flying mid-range. But the legacy of the buzz goes a lot deeper than just that.
Welcome back. We're taking an overview shot of hole number 10. 11 will play from the center of your screen off to the left side. First, Henna trying to save par here on 10. She came into hole number 10 with a three stroke deficit. And that could increase if she doesn't convert from here. She does. She is still in it, folks. I'm thinking as Henna's setting up, you know, what she's saying to herself to kind of pump herself up after a few short missed putts. That was no easy putt. Uphill, knowing that she has to save that, save her par. Beautiful putt. Owen Scoggins looking to bounce back. And Owen answers the call, putting another birdie on her scorecard. She now has four birdies. She sits at one over, still four ahead of Missy Gannon at the moment. Missy can bring that to three with a birdie connection here. Missy, back-to-back -back birdies on 9 and 10. But even with the make by Henna, that was to save par. So Kristen, an opportunity to move to four-stroke advantage with a birdie here. Kristen, four ahead. We're going to roll the Zuka replay. Hannah Bloomrose needed this to save the par. Dead center. Perfect speed, perfect control. Hannah, however, still a four stroke deficit to our leader, Kristen Tatar. And think of all of these experiences that Henna is going through with being one of the best players in our sport, but just coming up just short, missing just a few putts and falling short of being our leader, being our champion at the end of the weekend. And I felt like it all boiled up to that putt right there. From one fin to another. Evelina with a long look for birdie. Doesn't get it to drop. As she's uh, up ahead on the green of 12. Let me take another look. This is hole number 11 there at the top of your screen. They'll be throwing toward the bottom and the gallery with the best view maybe of the year to be able to take this all in. I see Gannon with the honors. Well placed shot, Missy. She'll have about 235 left to the pin. In the name same neighborhood, we'll find Kristen Tatar. Fairways lined with out of bounds on the left hand side, just at the base of the hill. So the players are playing safer shots out wide to the right. And if you land like that for Owen, bringing it close to the left, you're going to have a more direct route on your second shot. Whereas more to the right, it favors a sidearm approach down into the pin. Just before they had started to tee off, Henna had gone up and checked the tee. Putting looked good there, and the drive looks even better. Going to flirt with the left side OB. Does it check up in time? And it does. 
Zoe Andike loves it. Zoe, that's a huge drive. Tell us about the angle to the basket. Well, Terry, we knew that she was making it well around this corner in practice shots. She was totally frustrated on uh, round two, not getting that advantage. And she has a beautiful straight look to the basket. It'll just be a little putter up shot for the birdie. That was a fantastic drive. Zoe would go as far as calling it a yeet, I'm sure, if she were here with us. So thanks to our friends at hooligandisc.com. You, too, could go out and pick up yourself a yeet. Not promising you'll throw quite as far as henna, but it'll at least give you a chance. Hooligandisc.com. Full yeet all the time right here on hole number 11. And once you've picked up a yeet, you can play different and uh, maybe put that yeet inside your upper park bag as they've been proud supporters and sponsors not only of the Green Mountain Championships but of so many of our touring players. Find one of your favorite touring players' codes on the website. Careful, Save yourself okay, 10%. Go also you, okay? support sure. your favorite player and own Scoggins. You we so know is the favorite of so many. We'll see what she's going to do here on her approach. 261 to the pin. Right side, but safe. Just under 260 to the pin, the forehand Checks up short. Great position for Kristen to pick up a birdie here on 11. These are blind shots that the players are throwing down into the woods. They have to pick the window through those trees that kind of guard the entrance down into the, the woods and just hope it turns out. We've got out of bounds right at circle's edge to the right and beyond the pin. Trying to navigate just over that rock wall and that's coming in but gets caught up by one of the guardians. Players really need to make a conscious decision from that distance. First of all, they have to see if they have an open putt or a clear enough putt to run at it. Then they have to decide if they want to run at it because it can very quickly roll away or get past the basket and find the OB deep on the putt. So Missy Gannon will certainly have a decision to make when she gets to her lie. And so close to the out of bounds, but she is in and has just 140 left to the pin. That is half the distance that Owen Scoggins had. Even with one of the best drives you could ever ask for, you still cannot see the pin from where she's standing. Slopes down the entire way. Does it have the right touch? And it's too much. She's gone deep. The exact OB I was mentioning, just behind the basket. She will have a comeback putt to save par. But Hannah not able to take advantage of the huge drive here on 11. Hannah is fighting and trying to make these shots happen from big putts to trying to throw a little bit extra on each one of these shots and getting a little too greedy on either one of these courses out here at the GMC, it can bite you. You need to just be in control of every single one of your shots from tee to green.
Missy Gannon launching it up. Not connecting, but she'll have a short butt for the par. Kristen doesn't convert. This could have been a two-stroke swing, swing possibly for Kristen and Henna. Kristen for sure tapping in for the par. Yeah. Henna will need to make this putt to save par. Remain just four back of Kristen. Four stroke is a lot to make up. And I'm glad to see that Henna is still in it with her her mind and able to step up to a putt like that where it's Almost a flip of the coin these days with if she's going to make it or not. So very solid putt. Thank you. From Henna and Owen as well. Of course, no surprise to see it from Owen Scoggins. That is a birdie for Owen. And now Missy with her par save. Missy's back-to-back -back birdies will be followed up by a par here on 11. Missy is four back of Owen. Owen is four back of Henna. And Henna, four back of Kristen. They were really spacing themselves out on the lead card. Even numbers make the math a little bit better for both of us here, Val. Here we have Valerie Mundahano. Good skip and carry toward the pin on 13. She'll be obstructed, but have a birdie look. Got Merch up next. Looks inside, we'll see if it filters. Oh, it straightens out for her. And anything but, that is a perfect shot for Cat Merch. has not seen a birdie since hole two. And a little bit of tree love knocks her next to the pin. Beautiful. Again, I'm looking at our lead card in the performance that Own Scoggins is putting up. Yes, she had the quadruple bogey, but I'm looking at five birdies by Own Scoggins in today's round. Her other three competitors combined have just six birdies. Unbelievable what we're seeing here. The separation, as you mentioned, though, four strokes as you look up the leaderboard. From person to person to person, four strokes apiece. Owen Scoggins, after back-to-back -back birdies on 10 and 11, he shot a 12. And erase the triple bogey from hole nine, and she'd be tied with Hina. These tee shots here are just layups. The 
edge of out of bounds. We're going to be throwing over the out of bounds creek that runs right in the middle of the fairway. And just as we saw from Missy in round number two, she set herself up very well with her positioning on this particular hole, and she's done so maybe even better today here in round four. About 320 feet to the edge of that bridge right there. Missy, we'll see. Kristen throw just before her, but they're in the same neighborhood. And we haven't seen anyone go for the big shot. It requires a drive of over 420 feet to get to that next part of the fairway. It looked like a slight slip, minor slip there by Hannah. And a little hesitation, but eventually a green flag as she's Staring down the tee pad, maybe in some frustration. Here's Mundahano now for birdie. We saw the drive. She's at circle's edge, all framed up. Oh, but the effort is a little too strong off the top. Here's Evelina with a birdie bid. And she cashes it. Evelina putting together four birdies in the last six holes. Take a look at what they're trying to do here on 12. You have to see a birdie here, Val. Yeah, and it really comes down to how far you can throw the second shot because the entire field is restricted to a tee shot of around 300 up to 320 feet in that area. Then you throw over this out of bounds zone to get to the basket. And you can see it kind of narrows in as you get closer to the pin so you have to throw a direct line all the way to the basket. You can't really use a lot of the fairway to help you gain that distance. When remembering her efforts from round number two. And there's no one deep, so. Round 350 feet. Get this shot for Henna. See that she'll bring it in one meter. You always have the option if you're near out of bounds or if you had gone out of bounds, you can bring it in up to one meter. You don't have to take all of it. low line drive she needed more height to it she certainly has the power to get there that just released or came out of her hand low so likely a par in store for henna Kristen, 337 to the pin. Distance not the problem. You mentioned just how difficult it is to put it on the perfect line, knowing you have out-of-bounds potential as well. Squared up almost perfectly for where you'd want to be, and this is pushing right side. I know Zoe's out there. Zoe, are you near the result of that throw? 
Yeah, Terry, and that resulted in the happiest tree kick for Kristen Tatar. That kicked back in bounds. Wow, so a fortunate break for Kristen keeping her in bounds. Gotta love a good tree out there. There's Gannon also pushing right side, hoping for it to drift back. That gets a kick, but it doesn't look like it's enough, and we see the red flag. Missy Gannon out of bounds. And we'll take another look. It seems like a shot that we would see our players getting close to the basket, but it requires just that extra pull, and Kristen yanks it over, clearly going out of bounds until she's saved by that three. There was no way that was coming back in bounds with the angle she had on it, along with the speed and velocity. And Zoe called it a very, very good tree kick to put her back out into the fairway, saving her a stroke. Now Evelina on the tee of 14. Uphill, protected green. Two trees in her way, but she'll be, well, she's hopefully gonna have the birdie look and then she's gonna be moving over to the MVP Open that's gonna be taking place next week and we want you to join us. We're gonna give you exclusive Disc Golf Network coverage Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then on Sunday, we will also be offering it up on YouTube, but you've gotta be there for all four rounds. Make sure you go out and subscribe today or if you're gonna be in person, head over to dgpt.com slash tickets and Maple Hill one of the most favorite venues and events for all of our competitors year after year I'd, I'd hate to see the poll between Smuggler's Notch and MVP because they are both so uh, highly regarded but two of the best events as we're closing out our year and the first iteration of our Disc Golf Pro Tour playoffs and what an amazing way to end the season with two very iconic courses. You know, for the people that have played the courses, they enjoy the challenge. And all of our spectators at home, I feel like you, you develop this relationship after watching these events happen year after year and the history and tradition that is created from both these events here in the Northeast. We saw just how close Kristen Tatar was to her out-of-bounds lie. And after chipping up, she's going to have an easy tap-in for the par. Kristen trying to maintain at least this four-stroke advantage she currently has over Henna. Metal hit, almost converting. Excuse me, Missy Gannon from 69 feet. The putter has been doing so much work out here today. On the West Coast, we play a game called dots. Anytime you hit metal without going in the basket, you can get a dot on your scorecard. And I think Missy Gannon's leading in dots in today's round. She is all over the pin. For a moment, I thought Kristen Tatar might have that uh, title wrapped up as she was low on a number of her early putts, but has since then adjusted. And our competitors have a long walk over to the Tia 13, but don't go anywhere. We've got the exciting conclusion on the other side of this commercial break. Power Grip, Europe's number one disc golf shop is now available in the United States. In Europe, we have five physical locations where you can shop at or at the online store powergripeurope.com. And in the U.S., shop powergripusa.com. What's up with that?
what could we have here? Fancy stuff here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good quality, super stiff, pretty grippy too, I would say. I think I would throw every disc in this plastic. The Millennium Scorpius is a 12-speed overstable distance driver. It's one of the best ultra-long distance drivers in the game today. Go grab one today at golfdisc.com. This golf education is important because it prolongs the length of our sport and the popularity of our sport. And the most receiving of disc golf is children. So if we get that introduced to them young, they might grow up to be the next Paul McBeth or the next Paige Pierce, and we don't know it. Most people just see a disc. At Discraft, we see over 40 years of innovation, driven by passion, consistency that inspires talent, built on a foundation, designed for success. Over four decades of experience, behind your first throw. Park Disc Golf, we're in business to make the game better for everyone. We do that by helping our player team grow their brands, by donating to great charities like You Play Disc Golf, by maintaining a 98% customer satisfaction rating, and by living our core values. Play different, create legendary relationships, be a good human, and enjoy the ride. So when you buy from Upper Park Disc Golf, you know you're buying from a company that loves the game as much as you do. Upper Park Disc Golf, play different. Welcome back, Owen Scoggins on the tee of 13. Oh, coming up short, and it will certainly be obstructed. <laughs> Owen's flexing on us. Wow. And here's Kristen's. And steer clear of all those final trees and inside the circle we can pick up another birdie it would be her fourth of the round and is really going to need to get something going especially with a tee shot like we just saw from Kristen and it's it's four back the only birdie she has is the near ace run that she had on Way back on hole number two. This looks great. And the worst possible kick that otherwise was going to curl in and hook up, come right toward the basket. And she has no idea that it hit the late tree. She's expecting to be parked and will be very disappointed to come up there and find out she's way deep in circle two. Hoping to get lucky if you release it early on this hole. Just gotta fight through a whole lot of trees. Give yourself a putt. <laughs> Owen is such a character. I mean, we know she's playing in the Masters division these days, and 
just to see how much energy she still has. I mean, it's leaps and bounds over you know, some of our players that are half her age. And up ahead on 15, this is Valerie Mundahano. And picking up yet another birdie. With that, Valerie has tied herself up with Missy Gannon for fourth place. That is huge to get a birdie on hole 15. That is one of the holes that we see can make or break the end of a player's round. And not only is she tied with her, that means that she has made up seven strokes on Missy Gannon in today's round to get into that tied for fourth position. And if Valerie keeps the momentum train rolling, she might try and find Owen Scoggins in her sights. Owen, three ahead of her, sitting at, or correction, five ahead of her, sitting at even for the tournament. Missy's going the outside route. She's gonna have to bring it in an aggressive hyzer angle for a short putt. Ooh. Seeing how close the out of bounds line is beyond the pin. Missy's inside the circle. Goggins, right next to the pin. Not quite as deep in circle two as I initially thought, but still far from the park job that we were expecting had she not hit the tree, and she'll be outstretched to her left, putting uphill. This is going to require a ton of power, and what she really needs to be careful of is not trying to put too much on it and finding one of the branches that would otherwise be in her flight. She's got to keep this low. You hit a branch, you could easily roll backward and have an even longer putt. Yeah. Unreal. Oh gosh. So much difficulty to that putt, and Hannah converts from circle two. I did not see that coming. That was such a challenging putt. It was almost a, a throw that was required. You know, that was a completely different type of stance and kind of loft that she had to put behind the putt to even give it a chance. I see Gannon's chance to save the par Splashes out on the right side, so Gannon will take another bogey, and that means she'll move to six over, and Valerie Mundahano will overtake her for solo fourth. Now Kristen to answer and maintain a four-stroke lead. And she does. So Kristen will have four strokes with five left to play. Plenty of fight left in Hannah with that huge putt from circle two. And the holes are running out and there's still a lot of strokes that Hannah needs to gain. And it is possible on this course. There is a lot of challenge, difficulty, and out of bounds left on this course. But this is truly what kept her alive. And the full extension and the fist pump, rarely do you see that much emotion and reaction out of Hannah, but well-deserved. She cashes it in. What a moment 
her hopes are still alive with five holes left to play. He's not going to go down without a fight, that's for sure. This is Valerie on the tee of 16. And anytime you're near that short tee pad, you're usually lined up with good positioning. Mason asking for the super high five. Are looking for the park job here on 14 comes up just short. And I'm just going to say it now, Val. I am blown away by the lack of trees that have been hit here on 14's green. And I know somebody's going to say, well, if a tree gets hit, you're going to blame me. That's fine. It's been impressive, though, on both MPO and FPO over these last three rounds. The previous round and today, I should say, of the lack of tree connections. Just like that. Somehow stays clear of all of them. It's been very impressive. I was going to say, you could have waited till everybody <laughs> teed off. I know, off. I know. Just a little courtesy here. We've I'm got sure. two more throws. Sure, everyone's going to be yelling if one hits a tree here. Owen hanging it wider, playing the skip up toward the basket. Tree free. The one tree hit is perfect for Missy Gannon. That's going to be a tap in birdie. <laughs> and as we're seeing the replay, Zoe, four out of the last five holes on this course are in the open. Tell us what the wind feels like out there right now and what we should expect. So things are going to get a little bit crazy here as the wind is starting to pick up, Terry. We're getting gusts of between 10 and 14 miles per hour, and then just nothing. So players are going to have to be super keen to try to read the flags and read the wind. Appreciate the read there, Zoe. And now we're on 16, which is half wooded and half open. And this drive looks fully crushed. What a perfect drive by Evelina. We were impressed with Valerie's a few moments ago. Evelina even improving upon that. Here's Own Scoggins from Circle Two. And to pick up her sixth birdie of the round. Just off right side chain. And just a step closer than Owen, right at Circle's edge. First two rounds, Tatar was deadly from Circle 2, converting on 55% of her putts. Yeah. And she does so here. Kristen Tatar not giving any opportunities for Hannah Bloomrose to catch her. Look at the wind. Hannah needs to answer with a birdie of her own to stay four back. <laughs> Hannah and Kristen back-to-back -back birdies on 13 and 14. Morning. The 
tap in for Gannon. No putting required there. Kristen Tatar seems unstoppable. She's got a four stroke lead with four left to play. We'll be right back. And Tatar, T of 15, bends left to right the entire way, and Tatar almost putting it in. Kristen will have a look at birdie. Hannah must answer with a great shot of her own. That's left side, it's getting up and turning over the late flip. Does it get all the way there? It's to circle's edge. So Hannah will also have a look at birdie. And the level of technicality it takes to throw a backhand on this tee shot. And uh, dialed it up perfectly. I see Gannon just outside of Circle's Edge, pin high with the basket. Flex shot coming in from old Scoggins, and she parks it. Scoggins trying to hold on to her podium spot underneath the pin. Let's take another look at Kristen's forehand. Just the bend from left to right the entire way. So close, Val. Trying to close out the tournament here early. Since this hole has been newly carved out on this course, I have not seen such great tee shots collectively as a group. I mean, these are four of the best shots on hole 15. Linda Hano finds the second open section of the fairway and with just the most perfect drive you see what evelina's can do on her second shot on 16 does she take advantage and she'll have a birdie look wide for Gannon. Although Gannon doesn't convert, just four of the better tee shots 
we've ever seen here on hole number 16 collectively by a group. All four of them with looks for birdie. short for Hannah just an inch short just in lining up for birdie this to give her a five stroke advantage with just three holes left to play Butter is back, locked in. And from here, Kristen can see her eyes on the finish line. Unfortunately, the finish line for Henna is looking like second place at the moment. Owen will tap in for the easy birdie. And Owen, now five behind Henna. Henna, five behind Kristen. Valerie with her third on 16. Beautiful shot, thank you. The wind is really picking up on the green. But Evelina making good with the birdie. What a great back nine. She's After a rough start. Yeah, put together four birdies in the last seven holes. Here we are on 16. And Evelina with the only birdie on this hole today, making it look good. And it all started with her tee shot. The closer you can get to that out of bounds line, just short of the bridge, it's going to give you a shorter second shot, but a more clean second shot and more airspace to work with. But the wind really picking up as you get out here into the open out of bounds on the right hand side and beyond the pin that tree line on the left is not out of bounds but does create quite an obstacle and because this basket is just sitting out there on its own it's tough for the players to judge that distance and dial up the exact precise distance to get inside the circle Great mix of wooded and open on just one hole. And that's the high left side, but very safe for Kristen. If she wants to play very conservative, she could just pitch out and over and play this for par. As you just mentioned, we've only seen one birdie here today, and that was by Evelina moments ago. And that will push left side, maybe gets a skipper a roll and doesn't so looking for a com conservative second shot there from own Not an ideal kick for Henna. On the other hand, a near perfect drive. Since Tara has been doing work, she's picked up birdies on the last three holes. Let's take a quick look back. Hole number 13. Blind downhill shot. 
finishes inside of 25 feet. Then the circle to putt. Back on 14 and then on 15. One of the most demanding tee shots that we find on this course. And just narrowly goes past the basket. She put that in for a turkey. Three consecutive birdies, 13 through 15. And now has a five stroke advantage over Hannah Blumross. Owen with 352 to the pin, obstructed, looking for her just to get over the out of bounds area and yep. pitch up the second section of the fairway. She's done just that. And Zoe, can you give us an assessment? It looked like Missy Gannon had the best possible lie out of everyone else in the group. Any assessment for what you saw? Yeah, Missy is the only drive that actually landed in an attackable position for the birdie outright. Whereas Kristen Tatar has a step out at best and Henna is going to have an uncomfortable step out here just to pitch it back into the fairway. All right, we appreciate it, Zoe. And now we're seeing what you mentioned from Henna. She's going to have a patent pending stance. She's got to control the angle here and we'll see how aggressive she's going to be with this shot she could find out of bounds with an errant approach. And Zoe, we heard, I think, a double kick of trees. Any idea if that landed in bounds or where it landed? Multiple tree kicks, and I think she's actually still in bounds, but kind of deep in the, the tree line there. So we didn't see any flags go up. I think she's in bounds, just in a tough position. And thank you, Zoe. And I think that will solidify. Kristen likely was going to be laying this shot up regardless just due to the positioning, but that may solidify her game plan here. She just needs to get it out and over. A par will be perfectly fine, but does she, she come up short? Is that out of bounds, Zoe? Kristen's shot is in bounds. It had made it over the gap, barely in bounds. Um, very interesting way to th shake things out here. Well, we always know with hole 16 looming, it's just getting out of the tunnel that is so difficult on this hole. It's very reminiscent to me of hole 18 at Idlewild where you have the very narrow, very challenging tunnel shots that you have to get through to then a more open space. And Missy Gannon in perfect position. up short and have a long look for the birdie. Mm -hmm. There is no lead that is safe on this course knowing you have 15, 16, not so much 17, but then 18 always looming because there's so much out of bounds and Hannah not able to get out cleanly. At best is going to be looking at a par. Kristen's looking at the same and if so, that means Kristen would have a five-stroke lead with just two holes left to play. That's assuming they can both escape here with pars. The difficulty of these courses has really ramped up in the fact that the players can't take these, just pitch out into the safety zone for granted. Every shot requires a full amount of focus and a lapse of precision can result to those OB strokes adding up. You almost just have to be so confident and, and aggressive, even on your layups. I see a new disc that we have Hannah marked with an OB, so we'll get a clarification here. I would say it probably has the best view right yeah. at least. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the chance. And certainly looks as if they're going to be marking the lie according to an out of bounds by Hannah and this this may effectively end Hannah's chances 
any chances she has to hunt down Kristen Tatar in the last two holes. At best, she can get up and down from here and walk away with the bogey five. That's off on the right side, hits the post, and that is out of bounds. The worst possible moment, Henna Bloomrose from just under 300 feet. Out of bounds, and that will end her run at the Green Mountain Championships. And the dynamic is so strange here because, of course, Ella, uh, Henna excuse me, wants to play really well to finish out these holes to put some kind of pressure on Kristen to give it a chance, but she's also bringing in the riskier shots and having two errors, now two out of bounds on these holes, Owen is right there to creep into that second place position if Henna continues with these errors. Your eyes are focused on what's ahead of you, but meanwhile, you should be looking in the rear view mirror. Kristen out of position. And you could not throw it any better. Unbelievable forehand from Kristen Tatar. I couldn't throw it any better in the most calm, perfect conditions. The wind is ripping out here in the open. And if you're just, I cannot believe how perfect that shot was, knowing if she exposes the flight too much, it could possibly get up, carry off to the right, find the out of bounds. If she overturns it, it could dig hard into the left side. What a shot by Kristen. Reminds me of then going back to Waco, Valerie Mundahano having to approach. Not This one wasn't nearly as far, but just having the perfect angle to find the green on hole 17 for Valerie back at Waco. And speaking of her, she's on hole 17 here. And trying. Oh, and she parks it. No matter what state she's in. Apparently she's got whole 17 dialed in. Valerie, a four under effort is what she's looking at today if she converts there. Very so. smooth approach from Henna regardless of the wind. A disastrous hole to finish her tournament. Yeah, she is going to be putting for a triple bogey. That will be a three-stroke difference between her and Kristen. And the deficit was already five. So we're looking at an eight-stroke advantage with two holes left to play. Missy, it's one stroke behind Valerie Mondahano. She's going to need to continue to give every putt left of this round a run. This is Owen Scoggins for par. And with that par, Owen has a legitimate chance to get past Hannah Bloomrose in the last two holes to possibly overtake that second place position. Hannah 
in with the seven. Next time we'll see this hole will be at the World Championships. This woman, Kristen Tatar, will be looking to defend her title in 2023. Just two holes left to play. We'll be right back. Kristen Tatar now an eight stroke advantage with just two holes left to play. This looks low, looking for some ground play. And that'll be short and will likely be just a pitch up next to the pin to walk away with a par. We have Valerie Mundahano currently in solo four. She's not past Missy Gannon at the moment. She needs this. Find the fairway, and it's going to do just that. Missy. Oh, no. It did find the fairway, and then it scooted out to the left and out of bounds for Valerie. That skipped about 100 feet to the left. We've seen so many shots come in and just check up almost perfectly in that fairway of 18, but not today. And Owen Scoggins pulls this one out to the right. To make it that much tougher for Owen Catch Hannah, who's, she sits two behind. Now, Missy Gannon. After Valerie went out of bounds, a good chance for Missy to step up the great drive. And eventually, the skip brings her back in bounds. Tough to get the distance on this one. You want to throw it out nice and straight so that you're getting the distance, but anything too straight will go out of bounds because the drone is showing us the perfect angle. It's a very sharp turn to get inside the circle. Now back with Valerie throwing her third. down into the right but still in bounds and let's fly hole number 17 and see what they're trying to do Val well 17 sets up great for the backhand hyzer 321 feet to get to the pin slightly sloping downhill as we approach the basket so you just need to throw something out wide but allow the disc to fight back hard to the left this is a decision-making type of putt. Do you go for the basket here? We know that it's a little bit windy. The basket's elevated. If you're outside the circle. For me, it's an automatic layup. Well, a forehand pitch is coming here from Kristen. Should be a short tap-in. Kristen is five under for today's round. And just outstanding. See Valerie with her upshot. Leaves that one a little short. So 
So implications for Valerie and Missy as they are both vying for that fourth and fifth place position. And Valerie shooting a four under for today's round. That's eight strokes better than what she shot in round two. She is on fire as we see Missy lay up. Currently Kristen, as I mentioned a moment ago, at five under for today's round. In round two when she played here, she shot six under. She had two bogeys. Today she has just a single bogey. Her previous round was rated 1030 when she was out here on Round number two. Here's Bloomrose for birdie. Goggins in for the bogey. With that, she'll fall back to even. And barring some catastrophic mistake by Hannah, Owens Goggins will likely finish third. As she is three behind Hannah. Here's Kristen. Golf. We've seen some high highs and some low lows. I mean, a couple of double bogeys, a couple of triple bogeys out of our lead card. Kristen Tatar remains consistent and is lining up for another big win. And this is for bogey for Valerie Mundahano. It splashes out the high right side. Fortunately, finishing on a rough note, but Valerie Mundahano likely will finish in fifth place. That, of course, barring or pending what we'll see from Missy Gannon. See Natalie Ryan jumped up five positions today. Ian Carey up four, and Katie Tati with a very solid round of even, matching the effort by Deanne Carey, moved up nine spots. Katie out there in the gallery right now, cheering on her fellow Estonian friend. Kristen Tatar and Kristen. Man, just thinking back, Val, a few holes ago, it seemed so close. Everything was so tight. And now Kristen steps onto the 72nd hole of competition with an eight stroke advantage. That truly takes all the pressure off of this tee shot where for most players, it is so extremely daunting. Just to think that Kristen Tatar's first major win was the USWDGC, just three days short of three years ago. And that one comes in going to skip off to the left. She'll gain all of the distance before going out of bounds. And like you said, really no pressure at this point. Of course, she wants to finish on a high note, but that is completely inconsequential in terms of going out of bounds off the tee here. Always a good feeling when you go out of bounds and you say, eh, oh well, <laughs> Doesn't I'm matter. going to win. It's just a rating point I'm going to lose, or a few <laughs> ratings points, which have also been very impressive from her this year. And there's a nice safe shot from Missy. She carried it over the out of bounds on the right, but she also kept it low. And that's the key to allowing the disc to hide her back, hit the middle of the fairway, and stick.
Well, there's been so many highlights, Terry. I think, though, that one thing that we really need to focus on, especially with a couple of more events in the playoffs here at the Disc Golf Pro Tour, is the fact that Kristen is in a very confident place in her, her season and in her career, but Hannah Bloomers is right there. She's young. She has all of this unleashed, incredible talent. It's just a matter of finding that confidence stride and, and really converting on all those opportunities. We've seen yeah. Henna right like there um, with there everything that it takes to be the winner of this event, but she's just got to put it all together, whereas Kristen is riding out that confident wave. I think that we're going to see a lot of different um, people up on our readerboard at MVP, so don't count anyone out, but certainly count Kristen in on the top of the podium for this one. Thank you for those insights and final thoughts, Zoe. Looking forward to having you talk with our champion, which should be just in a matter of moments. But y you said it perfectly. Hannah clearly has all of the skill sets. We, we can say the same uh, of her fellow Finnish player in Evelina Salonen. She also has all the skill sets, and sometimes it just comes down to some of that short-range putting and the execution because they show up they're driving as far or farther than anyone else and they both have incredible forehands when needed just a matter of putting it together on the green and missy gannon does plenty of that and that's a solid second shot and as zoe was laying all that out talking about a young player a lot of potential still building on the experiences i can't help to think about what we just seen in the last couple of years out here at this event. You know, it was the conversation of Paige Pierce versus Haley King, the final few holes of this tournament. Haley ended up coming just short, but then the next year she built on that and she was our champion at last year's event. And now we've got two brand new names up at our leaderboard on a consistent basis. The battle of the Europeans. Kristen Tatar has quite the record at this point against Henna, but it's only time till Henna can get a big win of her own. But what a great time to really start to get on the path of winning. These are huge events to finish the season. World Championship, of course, is a title everyone wants to win. But these are huge paychecks leading up to the Tour Championship. And Kristen Tatar and Anna are on a great pace to finish the season strong. Anna looking to close out with a par, likely just laying up from that second shot. Also noting that <laughs> the ageless wonder, so to speak, that we find in Owen Scoggins, this will be her sixth podium this year at FPO Elite Series or Majors events and her ninth top five out of the 13th that she's played. Rolling bounce. And that was coming in hot, but that's going to be out of bounds for Owen Scoggins. Again, regardless of what happens essentially on the completion of this hole, she's still going to find herself on the podium. She's got five stroke advantage over Missy Gannon and six over Mundahano. Consistency by that woman. Right there, Kristen Tatar. She has won six of her last seven majors, elite, and silver series events. Wow. Almost 100% yeah. win rate <laughs> at majors. Yeah, the only time that she hasn't won in the last few months was her third place finish at Ledgestone. So we saw her take down Des Moines. We saw her take down the Worlds. We saw her take down the silver series as well just last weekend in Pittsburgh. Just... What a tear she's been on. And we mentioned Ledgestone earlier in the broadcast about she carted one of her 
worst rounds at Ledgestone, but she still managed to get third place. That is just showing how strong of a, of a competitor Kristen Tatar has become. And this weekend, it wasn't easy. It wasn't as easy as some of the other wins have been for Kristen. She has looked so flawless that we were trying to find something to talk about to create drama. There's certainly a lot of opportunities for Henna to take advantage. But Kristen fought through the doubt, talked herself back into so many shots to get her mind back on track. And even as one of the best players, she's still growing in the sport. She is still figuring out how to take her game to the next level. And what another outstanding win for her. I apologize for the miss. For the oh, don't worry, don't worry. You got good? Yeah. This will be Owen's attempt at par from circle two. Oh, oh and it just okay. barely splashes out. Owen oh, Scoggins finish with a bogey. She'll be at one over for the tournament. Yeah. Again, securing her spot on the podium. Missy Gannon in. She's five over, solo fourth place. And I came in tied, but it, when it's all said and done, Kristen Tatar, your 2022 Green Mountain Championship winner. your 2022 champion of Discraft's Green Mountain Championship at Smuggler's Notch Resort in the first ever Disc Golf Pro Tour playoff event, Kristen Tatar! certainly got the championship trophy pose nailed down this season. She's had plenty of practice, so no surprise that she has perfected yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, Already thinking about next year when Kristen will be attempting to defend her world title at this very hole. Right now, Zoe Andyke, who's been out there hustling around all weekend, she's caught up with our champion, Kristen Tatar. Take it away. I'm standing here with Kristen Tatar, your Green Mountain Champion 2022. Kristen, how does it feel? Feels amazing. Uh, brings me almost back to worlds. The same feeling. I mean, the all the competitors are the same. They're the best in the world. Uh, and to be able to win here, it means a lot to me. Hey, and I just want to touch on your, your competition. You realize you're playing against all of the best players in the world and you're coming out on top in dominating fashion. What does that feel like? <laughs> um, <laughs> it feels great. I don't know what to say. It's, it's, uh, I'm actually living my dream right now. This is what I've been dreaming of and, and it's here and I'm just trying to enjoy every moment of it. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Well, let's have a thinking question really quickly. Uh, starting the day off, you know, where you guys were, such a close race mm -hmm. and then so many conversions in the first couple of holes. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a moment that you felt like you could let up or was it shot for shot the entire time? Um, it was pretty intense. Uh, I was just a little bit frustrated because my approach shots were kind of bad. Uh, I uh, kept uh, giving myself good spots off the tee and then 
not making good on the approach, uh, leaving it to circle two and today was not my uh, good putting day. So it was a little bit frustrating, but when it was the most important moment, when things got really tight, then I guess I found some strength in me to make the putts and uh, when it mattered the most. Yeah, because you did definitely find that, that typical putting stride that we've seen Kristen finish with. Any final words about those putts that went in or just about the way those last couple of holes felt? Uh, yeah, it, it just felt that uh, this is, uh, I can only change things right now. I cannot like live in the future or in the past. I just have to be in this moment and I have an opportunity to, I don't know, take the lead or extend the lead. Uh, and I just didn't think about it after that. I was just making the putts as I normally do during practice and it was okay. <laughs> Kristen, congratulations. We're looking forward to seeing you at the MVP Championships next weekend. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good. Kristen, we're just gonna get a picture yeah. right And Val, right we see Kristen Tatar going to get her photos, thanks to Kevin. It's been so incredible watching her performances over these last few weeks, truly over our entire 2022 season. And as you said, she definitely has the trophy pose all locked in. What do you make of a woman that's been so dominant? You dominated for a number of years when you're out there. What do you make of someone with this kind of confidence and that poise when she steps up and enters every single tournament, even a favorite? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it was, you were on like another level. Like you didn't feel, you were unstoppable. <laughs> it's been a long weekend it certainly has that's my <laughs> that's my bad uh she's been unstoppable again speak to that confidence though when you when you walk up as a as a possible favorite for a tournament yeah and especially like we were to these final events these are huge events that require all types of focus we're heading into the woods when we get out to mvp and Kristen looks so locked in i think it adds to how fierce of a competitor she is because she struggled a little bit this weekend. You know, there there were moments of doubt that we could actually say, like, there could be some competition. Henna can creep in. There are opportunities to take advantage or to take the lead from Kristen where we haven't seen that. We didn't see it really at the World Championship. She was just right there. Uh, Des Moines, unstoppable. So it was a moment this week where Things may have been a little bit rocky, but Kristen found a way to get everything back on track, to get the putt back dialed in, and yeah, she's just looking unstoppable. It, it's another level that these players get on when everything is going right, and if it's a little off, they can get it back pretty quickly, within a few holes at least. Well, that's what she did today to pull away. It was such an incredible performance. Uh, we're going to have more of the OTB After Show uh, coming at you after a word from these sponsors. We'll be right back. <laughs> Smugs. It's all about Smugs love. A love of three big mountains with terrain for all abilities and an annual average snowfall of over 300 inches. What's not to love? Smugs is an award-winning family resort with camps, lessons, equipment rentals, and so many fun-filled adventures on and off the slopes. It's why we're America's family resort. For the most affordable skiing and riding in Vermont, buy your season pass or bash badge before Halloween and save. What could we have here? What do we have here? This never gets old. Opening a new box of discs. Ho, 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 ho. Fancy stuff here. Okay. Ooh. This thing is sick. Good quality, super stiff. Pretty grippy too, I would say. I'm really super excited to throw these. I think I would throw every disc in this plastic.
We are dedicated to the game. Developing technology and providing data that helps you take the next step. Whether it's your next training session, league night, or major. Because we believe the best way to grow the sport is to push the sport. And the best way to do that is together. We're focused on the future to make that happen. The Millennium Draco is an overstable nine speed utility driver that's great for hyzers, backhand or forehand. Get yours at golfdisc.com. Unbelievable stuff from Paul McVeigh. Welcome back as we're going to take a quick look at Mr. Tatar and some of the effort she put out there today. This was an incredible recovery shot on hole number five. Out of position, relying on the forehand, then six. Stepped up, that's where we saw her separate from Henna, who had gone out of bounds. Tee shot here on hole number 10. Going for closest to the pin. And she gets it, she would tap that in for the birdie. On 13, the downhill blind shot, just riding the hillside. That's gonna drag her right to the basket. And this is the start of the separation for Kristen. To finish out, she was starting to gain her stride and the great drive on 13, a great putt on 14, and an ace run here on a difficult hole 15. Three birdies in a row allowed her to continue to gain the strokes. And made it a comfortable tap in to win another elite series event. Present your 2022 champion of Discraft's Green Mountain Championship at Smuggler's Notch Resort in the first ever Disc Golf Pro Tour playoff event. Kristen Tatar! As we've said before, looks like Kristen Tatar, Tatar is a superhero in that, and she certainly has been playing one. So impressive, the consistency that we've seen from her. Like you were saying, carrying that momentum into these last couple of events. We still have really big events that she needs to participate in with the MVP taking place next week. Then we're going to have the Throw Pink Championships in the week right after that, the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships. And we're going to take a quick look at some of our other competitors. Own Scoggins again finishing on the podium. So impressive what she does. And of course, falling off the pace here today, but putting up that battle throughout the weekend, being right there, coming into this fourth round tied with Kristen to push her. And it looked like it was going to be very close. They exchanged strokes back and forth early in the round. But once they got to hole 13, like you said, it felt as if Kristen just hit on, you know, punched the turbo boosters. And she's like, I'm off and running. I don't have time for this anymore. I'm just going to close this thing out. And we saw a couple other competitors move up the list, including Kristen's good friend in Katie Tati. She moved up eight spots into a tie for ninth today. Uh, with her effort of even out there, Deanne Carey also had a similar effort, shooting even par. 
pushing herself up the leaderboard as well. So that's what you see on the top 10. As we scroll down, we saw that Paige Pierce didn't come back with an, an incredible day today. She kind of just maintained it. In fact, it was almost on brand with what she had earlier in the week. And so that you got to wonder where will Paige Pierce dig for that confidence. She's won at MVP. She's won at Maple Hill before. But right now, it feels like her game is nowhere near what we're used to seeing from her. Right. And and though Paige, Katrina, Sarah Hokum, these are players that we would consistently see in our top five or at least our top ten for the last ten years. And to not even have them in the conversation this weekend, I mean, these players are multiple time winners of events like GMC and MVP open and their games are trending downward as these big events are going to continue to hit. I mean, they are lined up and stacked up. And so to not be feeling good about your game at this moment, it's going to be very struggling for these players to kind of find some confidence in their game and, and what they could put forward to finish off their season on a high note. Well, all three of those women you just mentioned are going to have to dig into their own memory banks to find that confidence. They've all won at Maple Hill. When you're looking at Katrina, Paige, Sarah, they've all won there before. That's one advantage right now that they have over Kristen. But right now, if you're looking at what Kristen's doing, you're certainly thinking she's going to be your odds-on favorite when she heads down into Massachusetts uh, during the next couple of days. We're also going to take a look at our Disc Golf Pro Tour standings because, of course, there's a little bit of a shakeup there as well. We have next weekend as our final playoff event, the MVP Open at Maple Hill. And Kristen Tatar, as of right now, has overtaken Paige Pierce for that number one position in our Disc Golf Pro Tour standings. And we were talking about those staples a moment ago. Paige, Kat, Sarah, the only women that have ever been on top of the Disc Golf Pro Tour at the end of the year. Well, this year, Kristen Tatar is in the driver's seat, and that will all come to a head next week after four rounds at Maple Hill. Owen Scoggins moved into a bye for the semifinals as of right now, and she had gotten past Valerie Mondahano uh, as Valerie finished in fifth this weekend. So that certainly is a, a battle you need to keep watch of because getting that buy into the semis so crucial we see natalie ryan has moved up two positions evelina Solonen with her performance finishing sixth this weekend pulls her up four spots into 12th for the disc golf pro tour standings and then Haley king she is in the qualified for play-in position she did win a major uh, here the u.s women's this year so she'll have that spot secured for that play-in position but not here defending her title this weekend. Lost her a spot overall uh, as she's moved to 15th. Hannah, nine spots up with her second place performance. And she is just three points behind Haley King. Alan Hanley not here this weekend, not picking up any points. But Jennifer Allen moves into the qualify to uh, for the play-in position, uh, moving up into that 20th spot. And right now, Kona Starpanis, Macy Valadez, both had fallen out of that opportunity. Juliana Corver, we saw her tying Paige Pierce today. She moves up one spot. She's been very vocal about what it would mean for her to earn her position into the Disc Golf Pro Tours uh, Championships next month. And right now, she's just on the outside looking in for her opportunity. We'll see if she can have a solid performance next weekend. Yeah, it's going to take a lot. and. It it's exciting to me because it is a goal for these players that have been playing a long time. They need to put up solid rounds, need a great finish here this weekend, but it's going to all come down to next weekend and to see how it all shakes out to see if their season continues on. That's all about the playoffs. And it's so exciting to have that. That is our first iteration here in 2022. Things are always getting a little wild here, and we also have the new location. We're going to see Nevin played uh, just outside of Charlotte uh, as our Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships venue. And right now, we're going to be able to close things out as we give you the OTB shot of the day. Thanks to our friends at Only the Best, and that is Kristen Tatar. We're going to take another look right in the middle of this charge that she was making in the last half of the course. Kristen, the forehand hyping it down, hole number 15's fairway. Oh! 
online the whole way. And most importantly, she would go on to convert that birdie. And that started out four of the best tee shots we've ever seen on hole 15. This outstanding performance from Kristen and to just nail in the coffin with a shot like this where you could easily bogey this hole or double bogey this hole to get a great tee shot. Birdie is going to gain strokes. Well, she did just that. That was her last birdie of the tournament. And next time she steps on this property, it will be to try and maintain that world championship title that she collected just a couple of weeks ago. As we say, next week, we're going to have the MVP open at Maple Hill, our second stop of the Disc Golf Pro Tour playoffs. If you want to join us in person, head over to dgpt.com slash tickets. Pick up a ticket for you and some family members or some friends. Come out and join us at Maple Hill. But if you can't get there in person, we expect to see you right here on the Disc Golf Network. We've got all four days of coverage coming at you Thursday through Sunday. That's all we have here for our FPO champion in Kristen Tatar. Congratulations to her. For Zoe Andyke out on the ground, along with Valerie Jenkins, I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. We'll see you this afternoon as we bring you our championship final round on the MPO side. That's everything at the Green Mountain Championships. We'll see you this afternoon. <laughs>